Lotus is going electric. Um, this is uh, not really uh, uh, news that most of the people um, usually embrace because nobody can really afford $2 million cars, at least not that many people. But I, I, I think the reason I report news like this uh, is, is important to overall perception of electric cars. Let me tell you what uh, Lotus is planning, why, and most importantly, why I think it's important to all of us in this community. All of this is coming up next. Welcome to E4 Electric, your number one source of unbiased electric car news. Uh, go ahead and click on that subscribe button down there so you don't miss anything moving forward. And you also will find out what I sound like when I'm not losing my voice. Okay, so um, Lotus is one of those brands that's been making pretty much, you know, hypercars, expensive multi-million dollar hypercars, though there were some uh, really affordable ones, if you remember the um, uh, Lotus Elise that the Tesla um, original Roadster was pretty much based on, right? They used their body. Um, and um, that was, I think, within within the reason. I think it was a hun uh, under $100,000. Um, and um, they never really went any further than that, right? Uh, Tesla just sourced uh, their body style um, and put their own guts in it and kind of went on, on their merry way. And that's how Tesla really started, right? Um, but nowadays... Uh, the hypercars, the, the really, really high-powered sports cars are really hesitant to go electric, right? Um, because the performance of the batteries is still a problem. Um, yes, you can go really quickly from zero to 60 once or twice, but because if you want to remain at a high speed, at a high uh, uh, output from the batteries, it is uh, very difficult with the current technology to keep the batteries um, uh, uh, not overheating, essentially. Now, that problem is being solved, and there are some companies that are actually coming out there and are putting out um, uh, hypercars and, and, and high-powered cars, Tesla being one of them with their second-generation um, Roadster. But there are also a, a few other brands, and that you know I've reported about them uh, uh, to you guys. Now, uh, uh, Lotus uh, uh, promised that they're going to start producing those cars um, maybe in about two or three years. They said early in the next decade, but we're about a year or two from the next decade. Um, so it's relatively soon. Um, this is also kind of a, uh, one of the more uh, uh, unusual moves because most of the legacy manufacturers like, you know, uh, of the hypercars, I mean, um, like Bugatti and Ferrari, Lamborghini are very hesitant to do that. Um, they, they, they just don't see the technology being up to date um, or at least being able to handle the performance that they want to put out to their uh, to their customers. Now, however, the startup companies, as usually startup companies are kind of beating the, the legacy uh, uh, competition, are able to reach that. Um, now, before I tell you about a couple of those that I've already told you guys about a few times now on this channel in the last year, uh, let me remind you that this channel and the show is sponsored by Evanex, the aftermarket accessories for Tesla, which will probably include the Tesla second generation Roadster when it does come out, which is should be in a couple of years as well. Um, there's a discount code in the description of this video. Go ahead and grab it, so that way you can start your you know shopping, holiday shopping, uh, a little early. All right, so uh, Pininfarina is uh, one of the cars um, that is going all electric. This is their first one. As you can see, it's still shadowy pictures. Um, they are not releasing uh, 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 all of the pictures of the car. I was lucky to see it in the Monterey, uh, in the Monterey Car Week um, just uh, the other day. On Friday, um, the opinion for Ina was kind enough to let me uh, release some exclusive pictures that you guys can see on my channel now. Um, little sneak peeks, so go ahead and check those out. As a matter of fact, I'll show you them right now. One, two, and three. This is probably the most revealing one. I have to say, in person, it looks amazing. But also, let's not forget a company that they've just partnered up with, uh, Remats, that they're on their kind of a second generation of their Roadster, um, also 2 million hypercar um, that they're uh, uh, working on right now. By the way, the CEOs of both companies, uh, the Automobili Pininfarina and Remac, have given me interviews on my channel, and you can check them out in my video library. But why are we talking about this $2 million cars that none of us can really afford? And if you can, congratulations. And Definitely let us check it out when you get it. But, um, you know, I always said that in order for the electric cars to succeed, we kind of need to beat the gas cars in their own game. 
uh, which a lot of time is, is performance, right? Speed and all the macho stuff that, that gas cars do so well. Well, no better way to beat them at their own game than to create a hyper car that can outperform the gas cars when it is electric, right? So this is why, and this is, you know, going back to uh, the fact that Lotus, one of the more, again, legacy manufacturers is now willing to go that route, uh, willing to invest and, and commit to the electric technology, means that we're really moving in the right direction. And I really, really, you know, essentially celebrate that. Um, let me know what you think about that, because I really want to know if you guys are on board with this, or you think this is just one of the gimmicks that just kind of belongs in a museum and a car show. Let me know in the comment section. Other than that, see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.